that I've been doing this live and I still feel that like weird nervousness or whatever of <laughs> of being live in front of people like I'm up on stage or something but uh but yeah we're we're here so that y'all can join in the conversation if you know there's so many times that I'm listening to a podcast and I'm just like oh ask this question because I'm curious about this. And then they just go on in a different direction. Uh, so this yeah. is your chance to, mm -hmm. to be like, wait, I want to ask Catherine this. And then you, you can, and I'll, I'll bring that in whenever it makes sense. Uh, but yeah. And also if you're watching the replay hashtag replay, uh, just let us know you're in here and uh, checking out the podcast. But um, yeah, Catherine, I guess we can get started. Awesome. Let me let me make sure. I'm just gonna double check YouTube is going. Okay, YouTube's here. It just takes takes a minute for them to wake up sometimes. Uh, but yeah, let me get back to where I can see you. There we go. All right. Yeah. Well, sweet. Um, yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna take a sip okay. of coffee first before we do. Oh, I'll join you. <laughs> this is always a good time to be like, okay, sip of coffee, maybe a sip of water too. Yeah clear the palette okay <laughs> well yeah welcome to the podcast uh catherine i'm excited to chat today this is uh this is gonna be a fun topic i think uh gonna be a different topic for me i feel like i am going to be like the uh the outsider of just like you know all of this like i i mean i've been married for 10 years i have two daughters I have a little knowledge of womanhood. Um, however, definitely not to uh, the extent that you have. Um, but yeah, Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm very thankful for you to kind of take me with this topic too, of course, because it's like one of those, things, oh, oh no, that's comfortable for me. <laughs> you know, right, I get yeah. It. <laughs> But I feel like it's one of those things that have been like put under the table for so long that mm -hmm. it just, you know, needs to be talked about a little bit more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I am all about having like the uncomfortable conversations. Um, mm -hmm. and, and not that this conversation is going to be uncomfortable or anything, but just <clears throat> like, like you said, it's, it's kind of been the topic of womanhood has been kind of pushed under the table. Um, I'm sure even for like women talking to other women of just like, I don't know. Can we like really even talk about this? Um, mm -hmm. And there are, you know, a bunch of other uh, other topics and, and conversations that haven't been as open and free of just like this is something we can talk about, uh, yeah. or that you know some people um, would just be like, oh, uh, the woes of womanhood. I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a like a fun topic. That doesn't sound like no. a like a how do I get my next 10,000 followers on Instagram type topic. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, very grateful for you, uh, having this conversation with me today and, um, just excited to see where we go. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially as it relates to our industry specifically too, yes. on things that you cannot postpone and you can't control. Right. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Before we get into all of that, I want to get to know you a little bit. Um, and we could talk about, you know, your 20 plus years of uh, photography experience and, and all of that, yeah. um, which is, is very cool. Um, however, I find that I get to know people a lot better by just like random questions and just like yes, please. <laughs> finding out uh, like what you like and all that. So I have stolen a bunch of questions from Stephen Colbert and then added some of my own. So I have um, 17 here. We're not going to go through all oh, 17. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> um, you just pick uh, two numbers between one and 17 and I'll ask you a couple questions. Okay. Let's do 11. 11? Uh-huh. Okay. 11 is, okay. Um, for, for water, flat or sparkling? Oh, you know, sparkling. Because if there was an op option like water with ice, oh yeah, that one. But sparkling water, Lacroix. Yeah. Ooh, Addition Lacroix. Okay. A bit. Do you do you have a favorite? Um, what do they call them? Essences, uh, not quite flavors. Like pe pample mousse. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the like, oh, grapefruit one. Grapefruit, yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. Really I I do like that. I'm not a big grapefruit fan of just like the fruit itself. 
Um, mm-hmm. But I, I do I like I do like the Lacroix, um, and uh, I there was a a band I actually still follow them on TikTok now, uh, but I was really big into them in high school called Pomplamoose, and oh. uh, that's whenever I learned that that is French for grapefruit, and I was like, oh, yeah. cool, little fun trivia fact. Um, yeah, but yeah, I had no clue. I can look it up too. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I don't even know what I'm drinking here. What is this thing? <laughs> Just let it's fresh. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we got some some grapefruit, LaCroix. What yes. is your second number? Okay, my second number will be six. Six, okay. Ooh, what was your first concert? Oh my goodness, this is going to be a little hilarious. Okay. Are you ready for this? I, I, I'm I'm going to put my coffee down. I'm embracing <laughs> myself. I'm ready for this. Michael W. Smith and Point of Grace oh, in my yes. little tiny town high school. Yes. That is so good. People will um, Google that later. <laughs> okay. I think they were at my first concert as well. So my first concert was like a festival type deal. Uh-huh. Um, and it was, I, I live in Texas, but um, we, we, we lived in an RV for a couple of years and I was homeschooled and we took a road trip up to Minnesota during mm. one summer, uh, following, uh, like this evangelist preacher, uh, who was from our church and, um, uh, and they had a festival in Minnesota in like 1999 and it was Michael W. Smith and Point of Grace and That's uh, hilarious. Amy Grant and yeah. DC Talk, oh Newsboys, goodness. all the Don't good. <laughs> yes, yes. All the, the Jesus Freak. Uh, oh I think Jesus goodness. Freak was out by then. It should have been mm-hmm. by 99. Yeah, it would have been out by then. Uh, but yeah, no, that's awesome. And they that's so hilarious. did they play at your high school? Yeah, at like our little small town's little... high school, our That's tiny, great. tiny little town, Linden, Washington. Basically, it's like Canadian border. It's like five minutes south of the border. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. So cool. Sweet. Yeah. I definitely know you a lot better now. I'm like, we've connected <laughs> on Pomplamous and yes. on our early childhood oh, Christian church. music. <laughs> yeah. The all, ev- oh, all the bands so that were in the CCM magazine. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that is great. Um, now that we know Catherine, um, uh, t- tell us a little about about uh, like where you're where you're based now and all that. Are yeah. you, you're still not in Washington, right? You're you're in California. No. Okay. Yeah, and I actually just celebrated ten years full time in San Diego. Nice, um, congratulations! So, thank you, thank you. So I've been we've been in San Diego though. I think we're creeping up on twelve years. Okay. Um, and yeah, Point very Loma, cool. Right by Sea World. Yes. Yeah. That's great. I love, um, I would say that's my favorite part of California. I've, I've been to a lot of the coast there. I haven't done a lot of like the Western or wait, no Eastern California, like the mountains and all of that. But mm-hmm. yeah, any, any time that I get work or go to conferences or something like in the San Diego area, yeah. like La Jolla and uh, yeah, all right. of that is just, I love it. So that's cool yeah. that you've been there 12 years now. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Very yeah, cool. And then it. what kind of photography do you mostly do? Yeah. So I do lifestyle, family, and wedding photography. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then with like lifestyle, is that more of like the candid kind of real moments, less of the like post-studio work type deal? Yes. However, the clients always want a little bit of those pose captures too. Yeah. So that's kind of where I start off. And then, you know, we go into more of the playful moments nice. to where it's not just, you know, taking you back to that really uncomfortable. Like, did you go to JC Penny yes. to get that family picture? You know? uh-huh. <laughs> kind of trying to reverse the concept of, you know, just the dread three family. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, I, I find that like 
pretty much anyone, even if they really identify with and like connect with your photos of like those real moments and like playful stuff with the kids. They're always just like, we still want that one of everyone looking at the camera, smiling, yeah, every time. put up over the mantle, send to the parents, uh, yeah. grandparents, all that. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll do that one. And then yeah. the rest of the hour is going to be what I want to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's cool. Okay. So, so we're talking about, about womanhood today. We're talking about, yeah. um, yeah, the, the, the woes of womanhood and, yeah. um, and just like all, all of that, everything. Um, what are like i mean obviously i am not a woman um mm -hmm. and and i can assume what what some of the woes are but could you like maybe break down Absolutely. some of the woes of womanhood and like how they yeah, can please. affect your business mm -hmm. yeah so i am a full-time family and wedding photographer and there are a lot of things that us women are faced with that we're kind of expected to just deal with and then keep going. But the reality is, is some of the things that our bodies go through kind of give us the feeling that we just need to quit or like, I can't do both or I mm. can't continue because how can I do this if I need to like, you know, go to the doctor X, Y, Z, how many times a week to get this blood drawn or what have you, you know, yeah. emergency situations, whatever. And oftentimes women, instead of, um, continuing to figure out or to even know that they can maintain their business, maintain a successful business and have a growing business while they are going through those things, that concept just doesn't you know, scream in their heads, like, I can do this. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, let's spell some things out, right? So I've had a couple miscarriages and I've had an ectopic pregnancy. Mm. I've been on bed rest with our beautiful little rainbow girl, Jade. She's six years old. She's beautiful. Nice. But I had a very critical pregnancy with her to where I had to go on bed rest at 19 weeks in the middle of wedding. Oh, season. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So for five months, I was on bed rest. Three of those weeks were hospital bed rest. Um, and then, you know, you're talking about post situation. Mm -hmm. You have a mom who's producing milk and you're at a wedding. And how do you navigate that? You right. know, there's different things like that, or somebody going through IVF who needs shots, or someone who has endometriosis and they're healing over in the bathroom with like this like sharp shooting pain. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so so much of that is not talked about. Like you said, it's it almost um, and then if we are kind of told that if we talk about this too and we draw attention to it or we're honest about it, then we're not necessarily the stronger business person. Right. That can just leave their stuff at the door. You know what mm. I mean? And yeah. Like this is, door, this is personal stuff. Like don't, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like that whole thing, which I, I know was like, well, I say was, it probably still is very big. I just haven't been in a nine to five job and, a long time. Yeah. But I remember that even like for me of just like, you know, whatever is going on in your personal life, like yeah. leave that at the door and, yeah. and come in. And uh, like, that is, that is very personal. And, but yeah. it's also like physical in your body. Yeah. You can't just like mm -hmm. be like, well, I am not going to have these endometriosis cramps right now. Right. I'm just going to leave that outside in the car and I'll be fine today. Like yeah. that's not something you can physically do. Right. And we're told we need to say, oh, you know what? I'm unable to talk today. I can talk to you tomorrow at this time. Most likely I'll have to get back to you kind of thing like that. Right. Not yeah. to even bring honesty to the door with your clients and just be like, mm -hmm. Hey, I just need you to know that this is something I'm dealing with today. And 
I really appreciate your grace and your understanding. Is there any way that you can talk tomorrow? Can I text you like if I'm feeling better or something like that? You know, yeah. if that second answer is often seen as weak or there's the fear, the internal fear of us that like, okay, if I say that to them, am I going to lose business? Is my business going to suffer because of that? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's just a big thing that I've been very passionate about. And mostly because I've lived through a lot of it. You know, I've been in the bathroom during the reception, pumping, sitting on the floor and having drunk women bang on the door and be like, get out X, Y, Z, you know, whatever they uh -huh. want to call me, you know, different things like that. And yeah, yeah. just... But my heart is to try and teach some of the things that I have done to maintain a successful and growing business, despite my like million things <laughs> that I've been kind of forced to overcome, but also have chosen to put um, some systems in place to make sure that my passion and my, uh, my love Mm -hmm. photography is not lost yeah also. yeah what what kind of systems do you can you put in place for something like that like especially for like being a wedding photographer and knowing that like every two hours you're gonna have to pump or you know you yeah. can't like you know bring your baby along i guess you can if you're just like if that's your <laughs> brand and that's <laughs> that's your level of, of personal uh space you could but uh like how do you like what kind of systems do you put in place when you know yeah. this is what the wedding day is going to look like or this right. is what uh you know, uh, what this, you know, I, I can see that later this week I have a photo shoot and I am, right. you know, in so much pain right now. Yeah. How do you, what can you do to kind of prepare for that? Yeah. Well, I have a story first. I, okay. um, I think it was about two months or so <clears throat> after I had my daughter Jade and she was refusing to take any kind of water. Uh-huh. And so my client's wedding was far enough away. It was an hour away in Julian. It's a cute little country town. And I think it was, I mean, it was snowing. So I, it could have been April. So I can't remember exactly. It was, well, you know, I guess two months. <laughs> it would have been closer to December. <laughs> Thinking about her birthday. Wait, I do know her right. birthday. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, I didn't, we didn't know what to do because how is she going to eat? How is she right. going to be okay? And we ended up booking one of the lodges that is on that like venue. At the, nice. <laughs> yeah. At the venue. Um, and so before, you know, I had fed her left for my starting time to start the formals and all the things. Uh, right before the ceremony, I raced down the stairs. It, I was I was literally running across. It was like something straight out of like a comedy situation. <laughs> but I'm like running across down these wooden steps into this wooden cabin. And I fed her really quick right before the ceremony. Then I run back up. Then I do the ceremony and more formals. And by now it's snow slush. And it's dinner time. And instead of eating dinner... I run down, mm -hmm. feed her, run back. <laughs> like it was ridiculous, but like that's, you know, so part of it is getting scrappy, right? Right. Yeah. But there are actual things that you can do. Um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit earlier before we were recording about a freebie that I have created too. I've got like a few yeah, yeah. provoking kind of steps that can prepare uh, people to at least be ready for these situations and to be able to overcome them to where your business doesn't suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also fine. Like, even if you're in the season of like, I don't even care if my business grows at this point, I just want to keep my clients happy and I want to maintain right. my business. Yeah. You know, and I think that is such a beautiful goal as well. Um, oh yeah like whatever is within your capacity 
Yeah, because um, we go through like those waves of just like everything is great. Like yeah. body feels great. Like my life is going really well right now. I have so much bandwidth to just like pour into my business and grow. And then other times are just like life is terrible. I feel terrible. Yeah. I have yeah. 10 minutes tops to like get on emails and then like i i have definitely gone through those uh seasons myself and like there are uh a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself and not just mm -hmm. like be like well i'm gonna have to push through this and keep yeah. up the same level sometimes it is like reassessing everything and like can i step back for a little bit and like just kind of pump the brakes and and mm -hmm. not like run full steam ahead like i have been but uh giving my my mind and my body uh and you know mental health just a little bit of room to breathe uh yeah because if if you do push too hard uh i have i have seen uh first person if you push too hard uh, in a lot of those places your business suffers too uh yeah. because uh you need to be healthy for your yes. business to be healthy yeah 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 and sometimes the answer is that you need to step back you know mm -hmm. but i think the main thing is is that when people feel that there is no other way that's right. where i want to pop in and be like hey hi. yes yeah you can do I can hard help. things yeah i can help you can do hard things you can keep your business going and this is a season mm -hmm. um you know and and for a lot of women, it's a forever ending season until, you know, they have a hysterectomy or they have something like that go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, there's ways to, you know, maintain your business despite what your situation is, temporary or long term. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this uh, freebie that I think you're going to share with people, yeah, it, yeah, we'll have it in the show notes and everything for everyone to download. Awesome. Yeah. So I kind of go over creating a backup plan that actually works. Okay. So, you know, how many times do you hear from people like, oh, they have a backup plan? But like, do they have a backup plan? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm guilty, or, you know, in the earlier days of not necessarily having a backup plan. Because half the time that actually doesn't arise until you're forced to create a backup plan. Right. Right. And usually that is like last minute of like, yeah. oh, things are happening now. I need a backup yeah. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Or even talking like relating to the pandemic. Right. So this situation mm -hmm. is not necessarily so honed in on, um, you know, the woes of womanhood in business, it's also when there's a recession, it's when there's inflation, it's yeah. when there's a pandemic. It's how to overcome and and keep your business when things get hard and when the unexpected happens. Mm -hmm. So having that backup plan is vital, but to actually know when you tell your client you have a backup plan that you actually physically believe like I know I have a backup plan like I know I can text xyz associates and reach out to them and see if they are going to be able to associate leave from my wedding today because I just miscarried and I cannot get off the couch and mm -hmm. you know this thing is happening or what have you right so I call these people and they answer and they're like, yes, Catherine, I'll be there. And obviously paid work, right? Right. But they're still there for you. That's one backup. The other is to have another situation. Like, so for me, it would be, I have such a, a wonderful, I'm very thankful for my network in the wedding industry, mm -hmm. you know? So reaching out to coordinators, what other photographers that if they can text, you know, five Coordinators each, or five photographers each, or what have you, you know. So oh, yeah. Those people, whoever is available, can contact me and then we can get the details going. Um, the other thing would be like the Honey Book uh, Opportunities page, mm -hmm. which is 
basically like a directory for all human, all like wedding professionals. Right. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And I feel like they're, I think I saw an email that they're taking it away, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, but, I hope not. Like, but I know uh, that they're yeah, going through a lot of changes right now. They're so. going through a lot of changes. Yeah. Cause I know that that takes a lot of time for them, but oh, I'm sure. yeah. So it's having steps that you can take when you are uh, breastfeeding and you get mastitis and you have a fever mm -hmm. and you just physically actually cannot be the best for your client. Right. You need to have a backup plan. Um, so it kind of goes over some different ways to do that. Okay. And then also like networking, doing the work getting yes. to know people in your industry, like-minded people, people with good values, people who are going to show up for you that you also want to show up for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those connections are gold. I, uh, I'm a huge advocate of networking and connections and community and like fostering that where, um, you can reach out to someone. I mean, I've been the recipient of many texts of just like, Hey, either, you know, I need someone to cover for me for later today, or so-and-so is looking for someone to associate their wedding. Cause you know, uh, a family member just passed away and they're not, not mentally there. They want to, they need yeah. to be with their, their family and they need someone to take this wedding and someone mm -hmm. that like having that community and network of people that you trust are mm -hmm. going to, um, to be great for your clients when you know like that it also takes a lot of humility of yourself to to just be like i know that i am not at a hundred percent and i'm not going to to be able to provide my clients with what uh they are needing so yeah. i'm going to reach and out to someone else incredibly difficult to have those conversations oh yeah it's really hard and the other thing I touch on too is honesty, like honesty, be honest with your clients. Like, I don't think we give humans enough credit. You know, there is a lot of empathy. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people actually can sympathize with what you're going through if you're real with them. Yes. But if you're hiding it and, you know, feeling horrible and trying to push through and you're not going to do your best, what's the result is they're going to see that reflected not only on their happy day, but also in the images post or whatever situation that could be florals or um, coordination or different things throughout the wedding and just, um, you know, all the different jobs within the wedding. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it can just, the ripple effects of that, of you kind of having a lot of pride in those Mm -hmm. situations where you just really got to be real yeah. um and then yeah. it results in a bad review and then what happens when a bad review comes is you're like i don't know if i can do this anymore and then yeah. there's self-doubt and then you just don't try as hard and yeah. yeah and then it's just it's a continuing cycle of well i don't feel like I can do this. I, I don't have that creativity to, to photograph anymore, but I'm still going to hide that. And I'm going to show up for the people that have already paid me and not be honest. And like, there's, yeah. there's something about that, just that honesty of, Hey, I've got a level with you. Like this may not be, I, I mean, obviously not what you're wanting as the client, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but this is where I am. And, yeah. uh, and, and sometimes it is like, Hey, I, I can't do like, I can't photograph your family today. Mm -hmm. Can we reschedule for next week or something yeah. like, does that work? Or I, I can reach out to one of my other photographers to photograph right. you because I, I physically cannot. Yeah. Sweeten the deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah, that, that kind of honesty, like you said, like that goes so far with people because a lot of times we like make up stuff in our head of, well, if I tell them this, they're going to think this and they're going to, you know, be like, Oh no, well I need a refund and I'm going to leave a one-star review and I'm going to tell everyone how horrible or this sue is us. or right. sue That's us. Good. Yeah. Yeah like so many things but yeah when you're real with them mm -hmm. it 
now it puts that ball in their court then of like how they're going to respond and react in that situation. And right. so many people saw that, not just women, throughout the wedding industry in the last three years with COVID, right? So oh, yeah. there's a lot of clients who are like, hey, if you have COVID, I don't want you to show the wedding. <laughs> right. You know, so <laughs> kind of thing. And then there will be people, and you know, I was getting texts all the time from different people who like had come down with it, who were looking for backups and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, being yeah. honest and real, then people are like, "Well, they didn't, they couldn't control that." Right. And you, had, at the end of the day, have to believe in your head. They believe that I'm being honest about being sick. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know, because you do that just mental like, twist. You're like, uh, do you just want a day off? Is that what this is? I know. <laughs> that that new series on Netflix is out and you just want to binge all day. That's what, okay. Yeah, for real, uh, right? But, and <laughs> there might be a handful of people that think that, Yeah. but the majority of people, like you said, like we don't, uh, give humans the the benefit of the doubt as as much as we should. Like people will, yeah. most people will be like they'll they'll be em empathetic with you uh, of yeah. just like okay yeah no I'm sorry you're yeah. you're not you're not feeling well you're not doing well whatever it is like yes we can we can accommodate that. Uh, I, I you you mentioned that about like uh, that honesty of uh, like not hiding stuff I. Um, used to have a video team that worked with me and uh they were great until they weren't and um just like slow deliveries you know uh months after they were supposed to deliver me the videos to like proof and quality check before sending them out and i kept uh kind of like hiding that from my clients of just like no this is my stuff i'm just gonna i'll deal with this like they don't need to know what's going on and finally one of them like was just like can you just tell us when we're going to get our videos and i was like i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know i've been working on it like i i've uh and and that once once i said that and like explained um a little bit of the situation i didn't have to go into super great detail yeah. of what exactly was going on but just was more upfront with them about the situation mm -hmm. Then they were like, oh, um, yeah, that sucks. Like, I'm yeah. sorry that you're going through that. Like, I did, they didn't even know that I was going through anything. Right. They just thought I was, you know, twiddling my thumbs over here. Just like, eh, I don't know. I'll get to your videos whenever we get to it. And they're like, okay, and they we understand now. person, too. Right, and so yeah. They're like, okay, it's doing work of so many more people now. Uh-huh uh-huh yeah and then uh and then they that saved me from uh i'm sure you know many like negative reviews uh yeah. and and to where uh even even one of them i didn't even ask them for reviews because i was like honestly I, if it's not five stars i don't think i really want a review and i don't feel like you got yeah. the, the five star treatment <laughs> And they the gave me that we cherry pick who we send that. I know, to. I know. I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna uncheck this one from my scheduled uh, <laughs> emails. Uh, but funny. they they did give me a five star review <laughs> and just mm -hmm. and and even mentioned that in the review of just like you know it it wasn't the most timely, but he kept us updated and all of that and was like, yeah. okay, yeah. that I is mean, something. So many other parts of the process that matter, right? Yes. Right. And it's like, you're still doing the work. You still have the consult call. You still book them. You send them the contract. You have, you're paying for the systems that carry the contract and you're, you did the engagement photos or, you know, whatever. It's like, you've done mm. all this work up until now. I know you're faced with a hiccup and you have to, you know, face that straight on and right. how you deal with those unexpected situations in life makes a huge difference on the reactions post and you know again ultimately the success and the continuation of your business oh yeah yeah so like with that like um i don't know kind of uh from, from everything that we've talked about already like what is one thing that you want, even, even if it's not something that we already talked about, but what is one thing that you want the listeners to really take away from our conversation today and like implement in 
uh, their business moving forward. Yeah. Well, first would be just knowing that you're not alone mm -hmm. and that it will actually do more good to talk about it and to figure it out and to try and create intentional systems that will help with your business, like the movement of it continuing to go forward. Um, that are actually possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I am a example of that. I've gone through so many different things. Like I've even, you know, miscarried on a wedding day. Like there's just been so mm -hmm. many different weird things, right? Um, but having those backup plans, maintaining honesty with my clientele and doing the work beforehand, networking and finding my people and not just taking and taking and taking from those people, yeah. but giving, paying them well, um, showing up when they need help and helping them out when they need help, offering to do headshots for them or different things like that, you know, mm -hmm. it goes both ways. But just that you don't have to give up if you don't want to, you know. Yeah. I, I think that's the main thing is just the people that truly have a drive and a passion and they just feel like they can't get over this hurdle. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to bring in buckets of money, but you are going to get through it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a season most likely, or at least until you get your groove. Yes. And yeah. 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 And like you mentioned it again, that community and networking is so important to uh entrepreneurs especially like us like solopreneurs if you're just mm -hmm. a, a one person team it gets so lonely and yeah. you know we don't have i i did a a virtual uh like work room where we were just like editing together over zoom and just chatting with other photographers so yesterday fun. and it was so much fun there was like i don't that know really five fun. five or six of us there and we just chatted about different things and yeah we're talking about like conferences that we went to recently or like movies and yeah. stuff that we were watching and it was just fun it felt like you know, just sitting next to each other at a coffee shop or something. Yeah. Uh, but like amazing. we as solopreneurs don't have community a lot of times because we yeah, are very lonely place. sitting at our house on the couch, on the laptop, whatever, editing our photos. It, it is a lonely place. And having that mm -hmm. community of people that you trust and that trust you is just is so, so important um, in yeah. in times that are are fine, that are good uh to to like rally around each other and just to right. you know, be there for each other and and have those friends and community but especially in times where you are not feeling great where you do need to yeah. call that that plan b of just like hey guys like that text thread or that you know local facebook group of uh i i need help like uh there's i i started a local facebook uh, group for photographers. There's like a couple hundred here locally. And I see in there constantly of just like, Hey, um, my kids messed up my, uh, my gray, you know, backdrop and I'm, I'm taking these headshots tomorrow. Does anybody have one that you can just like leave? Yeah. And it's like, Oh yeah, send me your address. I'll put it in the mailbox or whatever. And it's just like people showing up for each other and it, it yeah. makes my heart so happy, like seeing that. Um, mm -hmm. And that is something that if you're not a part of uh, listeners, um, definitely search out for those groups. Um, and if there aren't groups around, uh, then be like me. Cause whenever I moved here, there was not <laughs> something. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to create something and hopefully yeah. it'll turn into to something. Yeah. And, and it has, but and it's like, been great social media is a fantastic tool oh yeah too. that too mm -hmm. like instagram like find okay be intentional like what what venue what venues do you want to like let's say you're a wedding photographer what venues do you want to shoot at yeah. you know and then you look at that venue and you start following the people and you start following the coordinators that are posting about that mm -hmm. but then you check them out and you start following them and see if their values align if how their reviews are how they treat their clientele um you know making sure that you'll actually jive with them that 
it'll yeah. be a party when you have a wedding together. Like it's actually fun, you know, working together. Um, but then scheduling that coffee date, actually buying them coffee and being like, Hey, I love your work. I love what you do, but like genuinely meaning it and not being sneaky, you know? Right. Yeah. No ulterior motives Shame. of like, well, no. I'm going to take you out to coffee so that you'll do this for me. Uh, because yeah. remember when I bought you that $6 coffee, you owe me kind of thing. Yeah. 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 That but genuine... just for the sake of expanding mm -hmm. your network and yeah. again, not being alone. Right. <laughs> And right. having the opportunity where you can be like, hey, we're going to have a little virtual Zoom edit sesh. Bring oh, yeah. your coffee of choice and, you know, whatever. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, that's the best. It's it's so good, especially if you're feeling lonely. Because uh, mm -hmm. there have definitely been seasons that I have felt more uh, alone uh, here yeah. as an entrepreneur, especially like whenever you've got like your head down in your business, like I gotta, I gotta work on this. I gotta do that. I don't have time. You know, what if I join this virtual work and then we're just chatting for three hours and then I didn't get any work done at all. It's like, yeah, that's a possibility if you let it happen, but you can also be like, Hey guys, I'm going to listen to the conversation. I really have to finish these emails or whatever. Yeah. Like there's, uh, again, that that openness and honesty of, hey, I want to be here for community. However, like today I'm just going to yeah. be listening. Uh, yeah. But no, I love it. Uh, I, I think that is so good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. As we... Um, as we kind of wrap up the conversation, there's part of the show that I like to do where we talk about what we're loving. Um, and then we can get to where like people can follow you and, and where they can reach out and, sure. uh, and, and network and, and get and to know you on social media. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what, uh, what are you loving this week? Catherine could be literally anything, a uh, new yes. book to your show, whatever. Okay. Well, I'm a big coffee connoisseur. Ooh, okay. We, Is that why you asked about what it. coffee I was drinking when we jumped on earlier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big coffee person for sure. Nice. Um, so recently I've been living our little neighbor, little kiosk drive through mm. Americano with a little bit of steamed eggnog. Oh, like, yeah. Very seasonal. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I... I think I've had some coffee with eggnog before, or at least like those flavorings. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really good. I am not a big eggnog person, uh -huh. um, like making it fresh or whatever. Uh, I've had those at the the Christmas gatherings, the, the fall festivals and stuff. And yeah. um, I'm more of an apple cider person, but, um, but yeah, that with uh, mixed in with coffee, like all those flavors go yeah. really, really well. A little me. steamed. It has to be steamed though. <clears throat> so that it doesn't affect the temperature. Of coffee. Yes. Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good pole situation, right? Like mm -hmm. yes or no half the time. It's, I feel like it's almost 50 50. But oh, yeah. Yeah. I would hate it, right? Yeah. It's, it is definitely one of those dividing drinks where it's just like, oh, I love this so much. And then other mm -hmm. people are just like, I, I hate this so much. Like, I can't like even they think can't even about look it. at it. Like, it's yeah. like a textural. <laughs> like, I can't even walk down the dairy aisle in, in the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, funny. Yeah. Okay. That's um, awesome. I, I love, I love those, like that little point. drive through kiosk thing that has been uh -huh. one of the best uh changes in coffee shops i think yeah. um because so many times i wanted to like help out local or not help out but like put my money toward local coffee shops and like i really liked that they tend to do more experimental type flavors and stuff yeah but the coffee just overall tends to be a little better it is. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's usually from like local roasters or something. Mm -hmm. And they're not like these giant bags that are getting shipped across the state or from other countries or whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah, with with Littles in the car, I was like, I'm not just going to like oh, unbuckle all the car seats and take everyone in just to get a coffee. But now that there's drive throughs in yeah. so many local yeah. spots. I'm like, this is great. I can still yeah. support local and I don't right. have to get out of the car. So well, when Jay was younger, you mm -hmm. know, I had to re 
reinvent me time. I was trying mm. to like mentally mm. not look at certain things as like this is hard. Like I actually physically need to be by myself, doing my own thing for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was trying to think of different t- times or different ways that I could actually um, just refresh without having to necessarily be fully alone, yeah. you know? Right. So half the time that would be like in the car, she's in the car seat, she's stuck. She can't go anywhere. <laughs> nope. You know? And I would either, depending on the time of her age, I would either have a certain podcast on or music. Half the time it's music mm. that I just you know, refuels me Um, and go through a coffee shop, get a coffee, go for a little drive, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to do um, uh, like nap time drives, uh, especially like with uh, our first when he was really little of just like on the weekend when I was at home, like giving, giving my wife some, some alone time as well and just put him in his car seat and then he would pass out and I would just uh, drive around and listen to a podcast, go get a coffee, that same sort of thing of just like, we're still together. He's still getting his nap and all of that. But also I got my, my me time. Uh, Yeah. So Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. What am I loving this week? Um, I uh, I am loving the uh, the fair, the carnival. I don't know what it's called. Oh. Um, we had one that came into town earlier this week, I think, or I don't know. It it left earlier this week. Um, but we uh, it's like one of those little traveling ones that are you know a little sketchy. Uh, but luckily, our kids are. with not quite like not a yeah i guess it's not a carnival uh so like they didn't have like lions and elephants Mm. and stuff it was i I think it's more of like a fair uh of like uh, with the ferris wheel and with uh like little um like throwing darts at a balloon to pop and get a prize and and stuff like that and this was the first year that we had gone where all three of our kids could participate in things. I think last time was a couple years ago when our youngest was like maybe a year old, if mm-hmm. if not younger than that. And she was pretty much just like strapped to us uh, the whole time. And this time everyone was like riding rides by themselves and Aww. took the girls on the Ferris wheel. And they thought that was the best thing ever because we were so high up in the air. And just, yeah, that time. And it was... Uh, right after a cool front so we got a little bit of cool crisp weather that evening Mm -hmm. too so yeah i was loving that i took uh one of my uh film cameras with me with like some expired uh 35 millimeter film and i was like i'm just gonna shoot this and uh yeah yeah. uh, any of the expired stuff i'm like i'm not gonna like take this to a paid gig but i'll i'll do some personal work with it and uh so that should be getting those scans back soon oh that's awesome i was recently gifted um a camera that was my grandpa's that i never oh very cool and in his camera bag along with pencil shavings was (laughs) was old you know expired 35 millimeter and i mean obviously probably from the 80s like i don't remember ever seeing a camera in his hand Mm -hmm. like at all so um yeah i maybe have like three more shots before i can take it in see if anything turned out nice that's cool it's so fun like because because my my grandparents i don't remember any of them ever having a camera ever Mm -hmm. doing anything with any of that but as they have aged they've just been like oh and and because you know i've been a photographer for over a decade now they're like oh yeah photography john and then there's like hey there's i got this old camera uh that i've had for who knows how long you interested in this and uh like my grandmother gave me an old like the uh medium format uh like brownie camera and uh i was able to fix it up so the shutter worked and everything and just took that to the pool uh over last summer and took some photos with the kids and it looked like we were 
in the 70s just That's the way awesome. yeah, it was it was so fun i need to it's like sitting up on my shelf right now i need to get that down and shoot some more with that because that is is a lot of fun yeah but, i like doing that those um cameras on personal time yes same same yeah. or like extra something where someone's not paying me uh -huh. to bring it along to yeah. a wedding <laughs> yeah. but i did anyway yeah. <laughs> right right so anyway. awesome okay so Catherine, where can people find you where can they follow along and uh and connect online yeah um Catherine beth photography kind of around the board instagram katherinebethphotography.com for my website i'm mostly on instagram um cool. i'm Catherine beth photography wedding and family photographer on facebook <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> kind of a mouthful <laughs> um yeah okay sweet yeah i'll have all of those linked for everyone so y'all can just scroll on down to the show notes and find that and then i also uh i'll have your um uh, your uh freebie for everyone yes. uh linked in the awesome. show notes as well so y'all can grab that and uh yeah, yeah. and thank you so much for that that is, that is so so great um i'm excited to i'm gonna check that out as well yes uh, please yeah but yeah well thank you so well, much I'm for excited. being yeah yeah Thank you for, for taking me on and tackling an uncomfortable conversation. Um, and I think even, you know, the fellows in the wedding industry, I feel like the same, like get this freebie and read up on what your peers are going through. Yes. And so maybe you can have just a little bit more understanding of like when they ask for emergency situation and need help there, it might be a little bit more loaded than you think it is. Right. Um, and even further of an emergency than you could even imagine. Um, so you picking up that phone and saying, yes, I'll help you out means the world. So. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that is something like you said, you know, we these are topics that have kind of been, you know, shied away from um, mm -hmm. over the years. And, and I think it is so important uh, for guys to uh, to have these conversations and to mm -hmm. be there for, uh, you know, f for women, whenever, you know, y'all need us and, and not just be like, Oh, I don't know this stuff. Right. I don't know about. So I am not going to be here, but like yeah. educating yourself, listening to, to people having conversations. Uh, right. It just, it's, it makes for a much more well-rounded life and, uh, mm -hmm. and able to be there for, uh, your friends. So, yeah. Well, so guys, also, check it out like, too. <laughs> you can relate to the brides more too. You know, exactly. there are yeah. times at weddings where they are going to be candid about some things that you have the opportunity to be like, Oh, I'm sorry about, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Cool. But, Awesome. Well, Catherine, this has been so great. I really enjoyed this. Um, I, Good, I knew, I, I knew that this would be a different conversation. I'm glad that it wasn't like super, super, well, I don't know. It, it wasn't like super uncomfortable, but like, I also had the mindset of like, this is going to be a good conversation. I'm going to learn some stuff. I definitely learned some stuff uh, and uh, just really empowered me to be more, um, more connecting and like, uh, yeah, even even more uh, networking and, and like there for for other people. So thank you so much for awesome. for coming on the show today. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, that was my my pleasure. This is really great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, Facebook, YouTube, thank you all for joining in, and um, we will see you next time. Bye, y'all. <laughs>